Hey everybody, how's it going? About six or seven years ago, I was looking for a NAS rather than just keeping stuff on a bunch of random drives in my closet or in my computer. And I wound up going with a pre-built Synology Disk Station 1515 Plus rather than building my own. I regret that decision. I want to explain why I regret that decision because it may help somebody who's in the process of choosing to get a NAS. You may actually wind up saying that a Synology disk station makes total sense to me as a result of listening to this. So I'm not trying to trash them as a company here, rather just you know trying to give you an idea of why I regret that decision so maybe it'll help you in making your own. So there are three main reasons I chose to buy a pre-built Synology rather than build my own at the time. And these all come back to me being very, very busy with work. Back then, I was the only one in the store doing board repair. I was way overworked and had no time to sort out most of my personal affairs. So... The first is when a disk failure occurred, I liked the idea of knowing which disk was in which bay without having to do any sort of research. So I don't have to figure out that slash dev slash SDA is this serial number or Google uh, to figure out the Linux command to figure out dev SDA is this serial number, then read the serial numbers off all the drives, then put a little piece of tape on them. I didn't have to, that was something that I, I actually thought was valuable. I knew myself, I knew that I can be lazy at times, particularly when I am overworked and some a system that makes this as easy as possible for me was desired. The second is that I, the amount of work and effort it would have taken to get something as energy efficient as this likely would have taken up an outsized amount of my time versus just buying this. Again, I could have always just bought some old Dell Optiplex or some old Lenovo that had five SATA ports and used that, but that would have taken considerably more energy. It would have been noisier, and it also, again, amount of time it would have taken to build something that was quiet, as energy efficient, would have take, uh, taken time that I didn't want to deal with. And the third is that, again, the, the whole quote, the, the Apple thing, it just works when you plug it in. So I got this thing, and uh, there, at the time that I bought it, I didn't need some of the features and functionality that I need now. But it's really now that I'm noticing just how limited I am with something that I thought I would be able to kind of grow into a little bit. I knew I was going to regret not building my own. I just didn't know why. So... To go over the context of it, at the time that I bought this thing, I had less than 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. The idea that anybody would grow to give a shit about me as a human being, uh, what I have to say, that I would be some sort of, quote, influencer, it really was not anywhere in my mind. So the idea of requiring something like encryption, because I don't know, when you have 1.7 million subscribers, people may stalk you, try to break into your apartment and take your shit. It just wasn't one of those things that was at the top of my mind at the time. So I didn't, but now once I decided maybe encrypting the disc would be a good idea, maybe that's something that I should do, is that that's when I started to realize what the limitations were. So if I go over here, you can see that I cannot encrypt the drive or the shared folder because the name of an encrypted file or folder exceeded 143 characters. Now, when we're talking about 143 characters, you may be thinking, who the hell names their files over 143 characters? No, you don't understand. We're not talking about the file. We're talking about the path to the file. So the path to the file plus the file name itself has to be under 143 characters. Originally, I thought it was only over 143 characters. So I actually went through, found some Linux command, found all the folders, and I mean, found all the files that were over that and renamed them. And then when I realized it was path as well, that, that just wound up being something that was completely impossible. So at that point, I thought, well, there's a USB port on the back of this thing. So maybe I won't be able to use this for, uh, for you know, all the NAS functionality. I won't be able to use the computing features of it. I'll just use it as some sort of dumb thing. I'll set up the RAID or an LVM inside of here, and then I will attach it to my computer using either the eSATA port on the bottom or the USB port here. Surely if you include an eSATA port and a USB port, it's because you intend for this to be able to be seen as external storage when you plug it into a computer, right? Wrong. That's not what they're for. They're there to set up transfers to other devices. So if you plug this into your computer using either the eSATA port or the USB port, you will not see anything. It doesn't work in that way. The third thing I thought to do was, okay, what if I install? What if I do something crazy? I, I, I know I won't be able to use all the functionality. Let me install FreeNAS or Ubuntu Server or something else on here, and I'll set up an encrypted volume with RAID 5 myself. You actually can't do that either. So... At this point, what I'm doing is I am transferring all of the stuff from here to two larger hard drives. Then I am going to be formatting these drives. Then I'm going to be just putting them inside of my main desktop case. And I'm going to 
put a make a raid 5 array inside of my own desktop case rather than just build another nas at this point and use it that way uh, this is limited to the point where when i realized i needed a change in the usage of it there's nothing I could do, even if I'm willing to modify my workflow by utilizing this just as a dumb terminal for that deals with the drives or actually reinstalling a different operating system. There's really nothing you can do to have this evolve with a different use case. Again, if I wish to have the disk be encrypted, there's jack shit I could do with this. Whereas if I was using uh, Ubuntu server on hardware that I had put together myself, I would have the option to go ahead with it and deal with any of the compromises of using a disk encryption system that may or may not slow things down. But I cannot make that decision for myself because I purchased a pre-built. Now, for you, that may not matter. The idea that what I get is what I get and that I cannot build on it later may not make sense. You may not care about that. The idea of having a compact package that is quiet, that is sleek, that is reliable, that has a user-friendly interface may actually be more important to you. But if you think that you may evolve the manner within which you utilize this as time goes on, be aware that there's going to be certain limitations. I, I, I took for granted this when I decided to log into it. I thought, well, you know, surely a NAS by a, a, you know, a professional NAS company or whatever, even if it's one of the lower end ones that was around five or six hundred bucks when I bought it, surely that would have the ability for some sort of basic encryption or to be able to be plugged into a computer to show up as a disk. Nah, you get this. And again, this is this functionality is, in my opinion, uh, functionally worthless. The idea that your path and your file name has to be less than 143 characters it makes it, for me, particularly unusable. Had I simply purchased a NAS that I had pre-built myself six or seven years ago, I would have just been able to make some modifications. I may have copied all of my files off somewhere else temporarily, made it encrypted volume, and then copied everything to it. But because I bought a pre-built solution, rather than taking the time from the beginning to create a proper solution that I could then grow into, I now have to waste more time now than I did back then. So I said back then, I do not want to waste time figuring out commands, waste time installing my own distribution, waste time building my own system and all that stuff. I wanted a quick solution. And because I went for the quick solution rather than the proper solution, not only do I have to uh, do, not only did I spend the money on this, but now I get to spend the money again and I also get to spend the time again doing what I should have done right in the first place. So I hope that this video, if anything, helps you with making your decision. You may find that these small little things that I'm talking about actually don't matter to you. And if they don't matter to you, then perhaps it makes no sense for you to build your own NAS versus buy a pre-built. A pre-built may be a great solution for you, and this little piece of hardware has been kicking for about the last seven years and has been just fine. Again, it's not not it's not a device that I find has a build quality issues, durability issues. It doesn't give me, you know, random errors for no reason. It does what it's supposed to do. However, if you think in the future that you're going to want anything different out of this device than what you are using it for right now, recognize that with an open system that you build yourself, you will probably save yourself time going into the future having to replace your hardware or redo everything from scratch if you decide that you want something like usable disk encryption, which you're just not going to get out of this thing. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hopefully this helps you with your decision when it comes to purchasing one of these products, and I hope you learned something. Oh, by the way, last thing. You know, I actually figured out about this thing and all the commands necessary on, on a Reddit. Uh, Synology support was zero help at all. I submitted a ticket. I was just out of curiosity. Is this 143 characters a path limit or is this a, a file size limit? And also, is there a command that would make it easy to figure this out? There was something posted on Reddit. They, they, posted, they had a lovely little command. They explained everything very clearly. A Synology does not really clearly explain that. And when you actually open a support ticket to ask a question, uh, you, you're, you're, you're speaking to the wind there. You're never going to get an answer. I've never gotten an answer and uh, I don't expect to. So don't expect that you're going to get particularly great support just because you're buying from a company versus dealing with, you know, free NAS or Ubuntu server. I would say that you're probably actually going to get better support in IRC or on a forum for Ubuntu server or FreeNAS than you're actually going to get from Synology after giving them money. Uh, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. Hope this helps you with your decision on whether to get a pre-built or build your own NAS. Bye now.